In this video, I'm gonna be ranking Rolex models, giving you guys my honest opinion. So we have five categories. One would be my grail piece. One would be, I'd put it in my collection. The other one is, I'd absolutely daily this watch. The other one is, it's a buy, but only just a buy. And the final one is, it's a million percent pass. So the first one is Deep Sea Challenge, 50 mil titanium. We actually had a client in yesterday, often as one in Park Exchange. We are gonna to look to get the deal done on that. We've had two in the LWC, one in twice, just let you guys know. It is Rolex proving a point. Is Rolex saying, this is what we can do. Ironically, everyone we've sold, we've actually sized for clients. They've actually had it sized to wear on alternative evenings or a bit of a fun down the pub. In fact, my client that came yesterday, he's actually wearing it as a daily. Can you believe it? But he actually is. But for me, I think it's a pure commodity. There's a short run. There's hardly any out there in the wild. And for me, it has to be in my collection. The Sky Dweller Rose Gold Oyster Flex Chocolate Dial. Beautiful watch. But for me personally, I love the Oyster Flex Daytona. So unfortunately, it falls straight into the past category. The iconic GMT Master 2 Pepsi. What do I think of that? Yeah. I absolutely love that watch. If you guys have not seen it on the channel, I actually wore this watch for a week. Jewelry bracelet, not normally my thing. I'm an Oyster Bracelet or Oyster Flex guy, 1 million percent. But there's something about that watch on the Jubilee bracelet. I see where you guys like it. And for me, because of what the watch is, and I know it's in a lot of your guys' collections, for me, I'd daily and I'd daily the hell out of it. Rolex Air King, steel model. It is a Marmite watch. There's viewers out there who will absolutely love this watch. It certainly splits the buyers. There is a price point for this in the marketplace, and there are clients who do request this watch, but for me, it is something that I could not have seen myself wearing. It's just too plain Jane for me. Obviously, it's like there's not a lot going on, which is why buyers buy that watch. Um, it has quite a unique dial, I would say, which again is why people do like that watch, but I just don't find it attractive. It absolutely does nothing for me. So, pass. Dejus 41 Fluted Jubilee Mint. A really nice watch, actually. For me, it would fall into the category of just a buy. And the only reason for that is because I hold the Wimbledon much higher regard than this watch. And if I bought the Mint, I would always wish it was the Wimbledon dial. So for me, the Mint is a just buy, but only just. The next one is the Sea Dweller 43 millimeters steel and gold by metal. This is a big watch. If I was gonna choose the steel and gold range, I would jump into the Submariner, which would be the blue one, obviously not the black. So I would actually prefer the look of a blue steel and gold. And the fact is it's a big watch. For me, the 43 millimeters in this category is just too big. So again, unfortunately for me, it is a million percent pass. The new release from Rolex, the 1908 in platinum. I actually think it's a beautiful watch, to be honest with you. I do see there's a place in the market for it. I do see the buyers out there for it. Would I buy it and wear it? Unfortunately not. The leather strap for me just makes it a little bit dated, which for you guys out there, that's why you will buy it and you so you should. But for me, it's a pass, but only for the reasons is I would never see myself wearing a watch like that on the leather strap. Ooh, Submariner Hulk, beautiful watch. I actually depend on the year of this watch. If it was a fully stickered, unworn, last of this model, which was 2020, fully stickered, full set, I would actually put that in my collection. If it was a pre-owned one, I would daily the hell out of it because I absolutely love the Submariner Hulk. So for the sake of this video, it's going straight in my collection. Explorer 2 Polar Dial, for me, I used to really like this watch and I am sad to say that I actually don't like it anymore. I think the size is good. I think the clarity on the dial is good. I see the purpose of the watch. It's certainly for most of you guys that watch a daily. When I've had them in, I thought, you know what? I could actually daily that watch. I could actually wear it myself. I think it's price point good. You can buy one roundabout list, which is eight, five, or just over up to 10K for a new one worn. So I do see the place in the market, but unfortunately, I think because I've had so many in and I've actually tried them on my wrist, for me, it is a pass because unfortunately, I just don't like it on my wrist. Daytona Oyster Flex, Eye of the Tiger. You can see I'm smiling already. For me, that is a million percent grail piece. End of story, full stop, no discussion, off catalog piece, heavy hitting watch. 
to give you guys an idea price wise we're looking around the 150k mark for that watch on the grey market. I think the retail price from Rolex was or still is around about 100, 110. What a watch that is. That is something you will never see in the wild. Anybody that owns that watch is extremely looking for me. If I get offered the chance to buy that watch and at reasonable money, I would buy it 1 million percent and it would go straight in my grail section. Bluesy, love this watch. Daily, daily, daily. What a watch this is. I wouldn't use it as my everyday daily, but I'd certainly wear it during the summer because I think it's a great summer watch. A watch that is iconic, a watch that is desired, a watch that is chased so much. Whenever we get them in LWC, they sell straight away and you can see why. So for me, the bluesy is in my daily category. The Rose Gold Sky Dweller Blue Face for me, it's just a bit too much you know could i see myself wearing that watch out unfortunately not would i feel comfortable wearing that watch out i just don't think i would i think the size is quite big 42 mil for whatever reason i'm around about a 40 41 millimeter guy so i used to wear the big 44 millimeter yacht master 2 yellow gold one of my personal favorites years ago would i wear that watch now either no i wouldn't so unfortunately for me it's just not my type of watch i can see why you guys buy it it is a beautiful watch but for me, it's a pass. So the OP Tiffany 41, historically, we all know this watch, where it went to. Does it say Tiffany and Corner Down? No. Is it Tiffany Colour? Yes. Is it discontinued? Yes. Where did it reach £45,000 in the grey market? Where is it now? It's stronger than the Celebration, still in the late teens. What do I think of it? I actually really like that watch. And for me, I would actually daily it. Yachtmaster 40 blue dial, two dial variants in this. The blue is always seen as the lesser dial. The rhodium is the most popular. It's one of those watches that when you're first getting into the watch industry, and I see it from all my clients that come and sit this side of the desk, it's that watch they always got. That's really nice watch. Unfortunately for me, they look and wear smaller than a 40 mil. The bezel do mark quite easy because they are platinum. So because I'm so far down the watch journey and with the company and you know what we've been through with all the watches over the years, it is a million percent pass. I would never wear that watch. The new deep sea yellow gold from Rolex. Do you know what it is? I'd like to see that watch in person. It's gonna be really hard for me to put it in a catalog, but I will do it for you. I do like the deep sea. I think it's a really good looking watch. I think it'd be a big meaty heavy gold watch. But the problem with it is, if I was to actually try and wear that as a daily, they sit high on the wrist, they catch on desk, they catch on door handles, they mark really easy. I do think it could be a possible good long term. So for me, I'd put it in my collection. The Steel Submariner Day, beautiful watch, iconic, one that all you guys buy all the time, one of our best selling models, but I'd have to have the No Day. It is a cleaner looking watch. I prefer watches without the Cyclops if I can, if I can choose in a particular model. It's a go to watch, it's the daily, it's the all rounder, you can wear it for anything you want. But for me, if I couldn't get the No Day, it'd be a buy and just a buy but because obviously I'd go for the no date, so it would have to unfortunately be a pass. The 18 karat rose gold Sundust Oyster Flex, what a beautiful watch that is. We sell so many at LBC, but for me personally, I prefer yellow gold or white gold in the Oyster Flex range. I would certainly obviously choose yellow gold over the white gold as well. So the Sundust, I can see why you guys buy it, but for me, I'm a yellow gold guy, through and through. So unfortunately, it would fall into the buy, but only just because I would choose, obviously, the yellow gold Pikachu. Did it, 40 yellow gold champagne numerals. Really nice watch, actually. I love a day day. I think it's quintessentially a gentleman's timepiece. I wore one for my wedding, but it had the Roman numeral silver dial. So because it's a gold watch, because it's got the champagne dial, for me, I would have to choose another dial. So again, if I had no choice of dial, I would put it as a buy, but only just. But obviously, if I could choose a better dial than it, unfortunately, it'd have to be a pass. The new reference Daytona steel black dial. What a watch that is, by the way. Absolutely love that watch. For you guys, unfortunately, if you've not seen it, it is a really stunning watch. We've seen all the changes over the years as Rolex has changed the models and movements and what have you. I think it's a beautiful watch. They do the Panda White, as you know. In this particular range, I do prefer the black dial. So for me, it wouldn't go in my grail. It wouldn't go in my collectible. So for me, the black dial, I would daily the hell out of it. 
Did you say the GMT Master 2 Saru? Funny you should say that, I've actually got one in the back here. So here we have my grail piece. I actually had the opportunity to buy this watch about four or five years ago, but I was still building the business. So for me, I couldn't afford to take the money out of the business to buy this watch. And for you guys that don't know, this is an off catalog piece. There's only three for sale online in the world with this combination. I'll open it up for you as I'm doing it. And it is the GMT Master 2 Saru. This is a factory set GMT Master 2 off catalog piece in 18 karat yellow gold. And if you look at the dial there, you'll see it's got the black dial, but what you'll notice is the bezel. And this has sapphire and diamond baguette bezel set with round brilliant white diamonds on the shoulders. To let you guys know, when I chased this watch, I could have bought this watch for around 50 to 55,000 pounds. We're talking a few years ago now. They've reached well over 100,000 pounds in its peak. And this watch now is worth realistically, I would say around the 80,000 or 85,000 pound mark. So to get here in 10 years, to be able to buy your Grail watch, and it is genuinely my Grail watch, be able to own it and wear it and genuinely have, you know, the pleasure of looking at this watch is an unbelievable moment for me. And this is my absolute grill. Just to let you guys know, around 70% of our viewers are not currently subscribed. So if you like what we do, please don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.